Hello once again, this is Brother Dave and time for another uh, short Bible teaching. And today we're going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. And the theme of today's Bible message is the attitude of, and behavior of last day's Christians. Ephesians 5. We're going to just read a few verses. Let me read from Ephesians 5 verse 14 to 21. Let's go here. Uh, it says, Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So... Uh, this is just a short few verses and verse 14 it says awake you who are asleep now uh, the Bible uses metaphors uh, or word pictures to describe something that is spiritual it uses natural terminology in order for us to get a spiritual point as it were when, uh, sometimes in the scripture when it uses the word sleep it literally means sleep like you went to bed it's nighttime or you took a nap you went to sleep another time uh, Jesus was talking about Lazarus and he told the two sisters Mary and Martha don't worry he's only sleeping but he was already dead and they left him to scorn the people left him at him but he was trying to make a point that uh, Lazarus was not permanently uh, dead, that he was going to resurrect him. And he used the figurative language to say he's only sleeping. And we see this a few times uh, in scripture, even uh, talks about uh, Christians and believers of all times, that they will be asleep in the dust of the earth until the resurrection comes then the Lord will awaken them, as it were, spiritually, and also their bodies will be raised. But here in Ephesians 5, verse 14, he's talking about salvation. He's talking about you are asleep, you're not alert, you don't really see life as it truly is, as not only physical life, but spiritual life. And when you... Uh, turn your life over to Jesus to be saved then he gives you light and you can awake from your sleep as it were and it says here awake from your sleep and Christ will give you light now also God is speaking through the uh, Apostle Paul here in Ephesians 5 to the Christians when he says uh, awake uh, we also find a parallel verse in Romans 13 11 it says and that knowing the time that now is it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe so he's trying to let the believers know uh, don't get too comfortable with day-to-day -day routines and activities and you forget that the end game here is that Christ is coming back and that we're going to be taken to, to be with him forever this life isn't going to last forever not here it's going to last in heaven in eternity with God with Jesus with the Saints and we must always keep that in mind uh, it's e easy to just be kind of lulled to sleep with the norms of every day but I think in this season now with the uh, coronavirus outbreak and the pandemic that's be as it's being named is uh, hitting the world all at once 
and we're forced to comply with civil law and stay home mostly and limit our travel and our activities with others, especially social activity, that uh, it, it makes one think that in this time, will not people come to realize that it's a very strange hour that we're living in? Uh, not like any other time that we've experienced in our entire lives. Probably even older people would say the same thing, unless they were alive for a hundred years or more, which are very few of those that are around that can say they were around during World War I, World War II, Vietnam era, so on and so forth. So uh, the exhortation, we're going to focus just on a few verses here. Um, let's go back to Ephesians 5. Um, 14, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk, in my version, here's a New King James, see that you walk circumspectly. That means carefully, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be un unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So we'll just stop at those verses. I won't continue on the rest that I read earlier. Um, <clears throat> here the scripture is letting us know not only be spiritually alert, awake, because our salvation is getting nearer and nearer every day that we're alive. We're getting closer and closer to the time of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back, the rapture many of us believe in, uh, that he will come back in the twinkling of an eye in a flash, a moment, and gather the saints, both dead and those who are alive and remaining. And in light of that, knowing that the time is evil, there's so much activity that's pointing to uh, this being an evil time. Some are uh, believing there's some kind of sinister plot to bring us all into a one world government and monetary system, the Antichrist, the false prophet, uh, Revelation lays that out. Uh, the two books of Thessalonians lay that out. Even Jesus mentioned these things when he was on earth in his uh, discourse, uh, Mark 13, Matthew 24, uh, Luke 21, parallel passages. And I've studied this a lot, especially when I was a younger Christian. I was fascinated with end times uh, teachings, uh, uh, a more theological term is eschatology and I read a lot of books by different authors and now that we've uh, already passed into uh, the year 2000 uh, we had the Y2K threat and uh, everybody was like oh is it the end of the world 1999 going to year 2000 and a lot of people were prepping you know even me I was prepping I remember we bought a uh, a propane uh, tank and, and a heater, or what? Not was it propane? A uh, kerosene. Uh, you, you can use that for heat. We lived in Alaska, so uh, if December 31st, you know, going into January 1st, it was pretty cold in Alaska. So we needed to have some kind of a heat source if if everything went off. And uh, we were we we bought a bunch of things and. Uh, prepared but then January 1st came and everything was just fine matter of fact it was very peaceful remember it just being like everything's just fine and well and uh, see just a little bit ahead of that time everybody was kind of tense like what's gonna happen what's gonna happen you know and then nothing happened you know like the boy who cried wolf then fast forward to 2001 September 11th nobody saw that coming or at least the average person did not know anything was getting ready to happen. We just woke up from our beds in the morning, turned on the TV, and there we're seeing the Twin Towers were already uh, fallen. And America was under attack. There was no warning. It just happened. So, you know, we contrast the two. Uh, sometimes, like, uh, even in 2012, the Mayan calendar... They said, uh, it's going to end, and that means it's the end of the world. Everybody's kind of going, hmm. 
But where did we hear this story before and it never happened, right? Sure enough, we got to Christmas, we got past uh, whatever the date was, I think it was December 21st or something, 2012. They said the Mayan calendar was going to end and then that's the, the end right there. And then there was some other guy, Harold Camping was going around saying the rapture was gonna happen sometime in 2011 or 2012. Didn't happen, nothing happened. So it's like the boy who cried wolf. A lot of people were like, why you made us, you worked us up into a frenzy. We were all getting ready and changing our, our tune, getting ourselves together, then nothing happened. But it seems like the nature of the scripture is that we won't know when these big things are going to happen. Don't take somebody's word for it. When Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour of my coming. So you be ready. For the Son of Man comes at a time that you least expect. So we have to be ready. We have to be awake. We have to be alert. And then he says, don't be unwise, but walk carefully. Walk with wisdom, redeeming the time, buying back the time. You know, we can't get back all the wasted time that we've wasted before. We can only say, today I'm going to do better at uh, making the most of the time, uh, being a, a good manager of your time, of your resources, of your vitality, your strength, your your physical strength, your emotional strength, your spiritual strength, mostly. So we need to take care of ourselves in this way. And as Christians, uh, praise the Lord, we have each other, to help each other. That's why we're doing things like this. I'm teaching. Hey, I need a swift kick in the butt sometimes too. You know, I get lazy or I get unmotivated and, and somebody else might be more highly motivated. Most of the time it's my wife. She's uh, on top of things and she'll let me know, hey, come out, come over in the kitchen and give me some help. I'm, I'm doing the laundry and it's pretty hot outside here in the Philippines, 97 degrees. Uh, lately it's been very, very hot. But we've also had some rain showers in the late afternoon, which kind of brings a little bit of refreshing. But, you know, we all need help. None of us is an island unto ourselves. No man is an island. No woman is an island. And we can help each other, encourage one another, uh, pray for each other, uh, say kind words, look out for the interests of others, and believe the best about people, not thinking the worst. Uh, <laughs> I know what you, you know what I mean, right? And uh, let's, just, let's just improve on these things and uh, uh, let's pray and ask God to help us where we are the weakest. Don't be afraid to tell God your faults, your failures. He already knows what they are before we even tell Him. But He's gracious and kind and He's waiting for us to just fall on His loving arms. There's many songs that talk about that, leaning on the everlasting arms and uh, you know, uh, Jesus, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling the old classic songs. So we're going to wrap it up here uh, with this short devotional on the last days, uh, our behavior and our attitude uh, from Ephesians 5, verses 14 through 21. I pray that you'll have a blessed day and week. And uh, uh, stay strong, be healthy, stay safe. Use wisdom in your activities, even though they may be lifting some restrictions in your area and in our area here as well. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, and God bless you all. Amen.